Good afternoon, everyone. We're out here to have a look at the difference between our three discovery styles within Moston Spectrum of Teaching Styles. When we get to that point um, of the discovery threshold, we look at the, the style of guided discovery, convergent discovery and divergent production. And I like a visual representation just to look at the difference between them to determine what decisions the students and teachers are making. Now, the common thread between these three styles is that we always have a start point which has been predetermined, but the end point and the way that we get to that end point might have some variation. So if we look at the, the first of these three discovery styles, the first being guided discovery. Now I've got my red cone here to represent problem or the issue or the thing that I have to actually work out and solve. And I've got my green cone as representing my end point. So in using guided discovery, the teacher has the start point and the end point predetermined, but we use a series of questions or prompts to guide the student along the path to work the answer out. But the point being here that we guide the discovery that the student actually undertakes. So there might be an exploration or a question that's asked by the teacher that the student actually starts to work out and has a partial discovery, almost a little bit of a mini aha moment. At this point, we've shown a level of understanding and potentially another question has been asked or another problem has been posed through the activity and we're guided to another mini aha moment, moving towards the final answer. This would then represent a series of questions and a series of mini discoveries until we get to that predetermined end point where the student themselves has actually worked out how to overcome that barrier or that problem or find the solution. So if we have a look at convergent discovery, it's helpful to have a look at the similarities with guided discovery in that we've got a predetermined start point and a singular predetermined end point like we did in guided discovery. But with convergent discovery, the idea is that the pathways that students take to get to that final answer can be different. So the students themselves can lead themselves off in different ways, determined by how they're understanding that problem and it's sort of a situation where we'll look at potentially trialing an er uh, tr trial and error with different solutions. So I've got some different coloured cones here to represent different students' paths to finding that answer out. So we might ask a particular question and student A might go off in this direction as a potential solution. Student B might go off in this direction and student C might go over here. And we can see effectively that they would all be taking different paths to getting to this final end point. Again, like guided discovery, the teachers used as an opportunity to ask more questions, take where the students are at at that point, and look for individual opportunities to guide them back towards that final answer. So we would then get student A, student B, and student C all discovering different things. They might come to similar points, or have similar uh, realisations along their paths. But the idea here is that regardless of the direction that the students go, the way the teacher uses questions and designs the tasks to bring, bring them towards the answer allows the students to all converge on that final answer, solution, or uh, what Moston describes as aha moment. So same start point, same end point, that students have the opportunities to find their own paths guided by the teacher based on their context or where they're going. So let's have a look at the third of those styles within that discovery threshold, this one being divergent production. The other two we looked at as discovery styles, but in this setting, it's not a student discovering an answer as such that's been predetermined. They're actually creating the answer at the end, hence why we call it divergent production, because the answer or the solution is actually being produced by the student. Similarity to our last two in guided and convergent discovery is we have a predetermined start point. So there's a problem that's being posed by the activity or by the teacher, or a question that's being posed by the teacher, but you can see we haven't got our green cone down the other end representing a predetermined answer. That's the role of the student in this setting is to look for a solution or an answer to this problem. So like convergent discovery, our divergent production encourages students to take different paths to actually find out the answer to this problem. So again, I might have student A, student B and student C working along their own paths here. 
and they might go off in different directions to what they originally thought, represented by these paths of cones here. All along the way, the role of the teacher is to assist this process. Now, the hard part in being a teacher in using this style is you don't know what these paths are going to be in the first instance, and you don't necessarily know what those solutions are going to be. You might have an idea yourself, but you're encouraging creativity. So you actually need to have a really strong confidence in the content, the way your students work, and to allow them to actually take the lead in this process. And so we might find that as we start to get to different places, students start to see the possible answers that are available to them or the possible solutions to the problem. The critical component here is understanding that the original problem can't have only one solution because we're encouraging the creation of the solution by the students. And I think sometimes that's difficult to actually comprehend or apply in practice, but let's think about the context in sports in applying tactical applications. There's not one set of tactics that's going to be successful for getting the ball down the other end of a field, for instance, to score a goal. So that might be a really useful way of thinking about having multiple solutions or multiple endpoints.